So today, um, I think we're going to look a little bit more at um, how some deeper places can bring inspiration and interest to our practice and therefore fuel the practice. In other words, uh, give a little bit more juice to the practice, even though the experiences we may not have now, or we may have one time and they may come and go and they do and so on. So uh, obviously deeper places are the places of, um, I would say deeper insight, but more than that, they are the, um, the places which fuel our motivation and keep us there. And for certainly, this is for me, the agenda when I uh, have been doing long, long retreats, what keeps me sitting like, you know, 12 hours a day, uh, even when I did the retreat for nine months in my own house, um, I was sitting six hours a day. And what kept me going in a way and the motivation was interest. What, what's next? Where do I look now? Uh, what's the place that I didn't notice yesterday? Can I go there again and then touch that place or that non-place to be more exact in the Dharma? Uh, can I go to that non-place? And um, so I do recommend always in a way exploring a little bit beyond uh, what we know and what's obvious. Uh, and therefore we you know, even in the instructions, I've been using words like what's at the end of a thought. And at the beginning, you might say, well, I don't know, you know, that doesn't make sense to me. There's lots of thinking going on. Where's the end? of I, But wait, just take that as a kind of image and be ready and be open. And it, at times, <clears throat> the um, something will appear or something will be discovered or we use imagination, and that's absolutely fine. Um, so today, uh, let's, we, we can go a little bit to the more subtle places, including uh, something which um, the importance of the energy body. Uh, I did pick up from uh, the teaching of Rob uh, Burbea, who is a beautiful teacher, or was a beautiful teacher, or still is. Uh, many of us already know that place or are touching that place, but uh, Rob gave it um, uh, importance, which I think is right. And um, so I want to kind of go there in our practice today. Uh, as I say, there'll be a little bit more silence as well. So give us an opportunity for things to come up or to issues to come up or issues things we want to happen and don't happen or things we that happen that we don't want to happen and a little bit remembering uh, the instructions that are um, that, 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 that we've been going through the last few days. And then I will do some guidance. So we'll have, um, uh, we'll start with uh, two words about just settling in and then there'll be silence. And then I'll come with some instructions on, I would say, uh, going into more subtle places uh, that, um, that are kind of invitations for us to explore in one way or another, whatever, even if we think of it poetically, absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, the world of image is just an invitation as well. The mind goes there because it does love that place. It knows that place. It's not that we have to kind of be scientists and say i'm only going to look at what is real and by the way the buddha, the buddha and buddhist psychology says that imagination is a kind of part of the sixth sense it's also a sense in a way like uh, memory uh, information that comes into the system through a doorway called the sixth doorway of memory mental content and imagination. So it's like a sense, like we're looking out at the tree and we see a tree. So we look uh, into the imagination world and we see an imaginary tree. Not so much difference.
Okay, so um, having said that, let's uh, um, begin uh, practice. I have to say that there's a, uh, a bulldozer working outside, um, so you may hear sound and I may hear sound, and uh, we just uh, allow that to be one of the uh, sense doors, uh, what's coming in through that sense door doesn't need to have any label on it disturbing or non-disturbing. It's just what's coming through the door of hearing, if it, if it, if it's still there. <clears throat> so we'll start with just a couple of minutes or a minute of, uh, uh, again, this, uh, the word that I prefer, the words that I prefer instead of mindfulness, the old translation to recollect means to remember and to collect ourselves at the same time. It's the original translation of sati. To wake up. And apamada. To care. In other words, to be aware of what's important, relevant, and needed right now, and right, right now. And surrender into that place.
So um, <clears throat> we had some time of silence to allow the real picture of our practice to emerge and check out how we are now, what's happening with an authentic gaze, what is happening. And the insight invites us firstly to see it really clearly. This is the truth of the moment. But I am neat, I am ready for it, I'm kind to it, I allow it. It can be in the mind, it can be in the heart, feelings, moods, it can be in the body. which we meet as phenomena, as the arising and passing of compounded experiences that are all made of other things, that they're all put together and passing. The insight is in the wisdom, it is non-identification. It arises and passes as it, as it is. It doesn't need to be believed or built on or constructed into stories and so on. In fact, the wisdom asked us to ask the question, is it really so? And moving into bodily life. And moving back into bodily life. And begin to zoom in on experience in the body, taking perhaps something that's very clear, like the touch of the hands. And seeing the experience more as almost to the traditional image, Kalapas, in the Abhidhamma. Breaking it down into just energetic 
electrical, flowing, sensations that we can't anymore say it's a finger or it's a hand. Subtle, energetic sensations of life in the fingers, touching, touches, energy. And at that level, we'll certainly discover how much every moment, every second, it's moving, changing, buzzing, vibrating. And understanding the wisdom, with a quick look, it just feels like touch. Hand is touching knee, for example. That's a quick look. When we dive in, in the, with the eye of meditation, with the eye of deeper meeting and intimacy with what's really going on, we see this touch is made up of buzzing, flowing energy. Even if we imagine it doesn't matter, just kind of uh, get a sense of what that might mean right now what the experience that might be right now. In the whole body, the whole body is alive and buzzing with energy and flowing with energy. Can we really see it as anything fixed? As we see the sensations, they're constantly moving. in the back, in the tummy, in the torso, with the breathing. In a sense that this whole package, which we call body, is actually alive and full of flows of energy and aliveness. In any way that we can experience it needs us to relax and drop into it. Allow it, love it. This is chi, prana, the energy of life.
then in a similar way, we can look at our mind. There will be thoughts passing by, but can we get a sense that the story that the thought is telling us is a habit, is an interpretation, is a summary. And actually the thoughts are light and flowing and just passing energy, they're like made of light. And we interpret them as a story, as a memory, as a picture. Now can we just a little bit relax and let go of that need to interpret thought as story? Again, the question, is it really so? Is it really a story? And if we step out of the stream of consciousness and see it as a stream, it's a stream of consciousness. Can we look at it a little bit with new eyes? Like a light, like, like wisps of cloud. Like mental energy, energy in the mind, flowing past. Telling stories as it goes. Where it really makes a difference and we can really notice it is often when there is something that is unpleasant, that has a little bit of dukkha in it, of uh, non-satisfaction. Whether it's in the body, such as a pain or a pressure or a tension, or in the mind, such as judgment or um, resistance or reactivity, or in the heart, such as uh, rejection, uh, boredom, confusion, hindrances. But if we look at that phenomenon with more penetrating eye, with a fresh gaze, and begin to break it up, get close to that experience, break it up, what is it made of? Easiest, of course, in the body. And that's the power of meditation in the body. But it's always made up of things. A pain in the back is made up of multitudes of cells and nerves that are all talking and expressing. And uh, it's uh, alive, this discomfort. Let it speak to us. That is where the insight of the three characteristics really work. Three characteristics, the three seals being uh, 
experience as dissatisfaction, experience as constantly passing and flowing and changing and unfixable, and experience not actually being owned by anybody, not entirely mine, just an experience that comes and goes. Let's experience that now with the discomfort, especially in the body. Changing, moving, buzzing energy of something a little bit uncomfortable. Changing its shape, changing its place, changing its intensity. And our capacity to step out of it in order to see it is already the practice of non-identification, of non-ownership. The attitude of care goes together with this attitude of interest and opening the experience. It's not a, an opposite because it tries to do something. It's more like readiness to walk through the field with interest and see this new spring flower, but also see this thorn that might scratch us. But we're available, we're there, we're there for it. And that's the caring. And finishing with a moment of just simplicity of being 
of the sense of a closure of sitting quietly. If reflections arise, that's great or not. So, how are we all? <laughs> Anything coming up? Vicky, I noticed you've um, unmuted yourself. Would you like to say something? Or did it happen by itself? No, sorry, it happened by itself. <laughs> so. Okay, fair enough. Things happen by themselves, <laughs> indeed. Uh, I would like. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's just have Tali because I don't think you've talked much before, and then Elia happily. Um, I would just like to say that. Um, it's way, way much more helpful for me uh, when you do when you do do the talking. It's um, beyond um, um, anything to compare um, when it's there and when it's not there. I understand that this is the practice, and of course I know. However, I just must say it because it's a huge, huge different difference of um, of where I'm spotted as if it's um, ages of light years away. <laughs> so I just had to say it, although it's very obvious and I'm sure it's for everyone, but I just had to say it. Yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. Thank you for that. I am aware of that, actually. And it was said yesterday also by uh, one of you. I can't remember which, uh, who said it. Uh, but at the same time, we really need to kind of uh, wean ourselves off that. This is a period of 10 days. And, um, and maybe we can use the recordings as we wish, of course. But... Uh, we do need to kind of allow uh, ourselves to plunge into that place. And maybe really it's the homework today for us. What is it that's missing when I don't have a voice guiding me? That's why I did it for like, I did it nearly 10 minutes today, but not half an hour. I mean, if it's half an hour, you don't need me. <laughs> you, you can, we can, uh, but um, it, it's worth exploring that, I think, itself. What you just said, Tali, exploring what it is the difference. Now, I understand there's a big difference. Light years is your description, but what is it that happens without a guiding voice? Look at that really carefully. That's me, Nagid. Like Tali is saying, without a guiding voice, I've just got 
something else and it looks it feels way less than with a guiding voice what is that way less where is it really is there dissatisfaction in it is there a feeling of loss is there a feeling of confusion is there a feeling that i'm not meditating it doesn't work for me what is that feeling that's in the real world now meditation doesn't work for me what's that thought well what what is it that needs to happen that's not happening? What I'm saying is open that place as well. And that's really, in a way, why the wisdom of whoever it was that um, sent the message to Ronit, there, uh, there is a wisdom in that. And I'm going to continue the last you know, few sessions to have a little bit more silence as part of the session and for us to practice, okay, without the kind of support um unsupported meditation by the way is a very classic uh, concept especially in tibetan um tibetan practice they talk about supported and unsupported and supported will be with a method of some kind even if it's no one speaking but we still have a method and unsupported is where there's no method <laughs> we're in we're just sort of thrust into reality and either we have ordinary mind or meditative mind and there's no system so it's um it's it's a, what i'm saying is it's an important reflection that you raised but it's itself it needs exploring what you said thank you okay elia yeah, first of all, I wanted to say thank you for the other day when I asked you about uh, the drifting off and you said, I think what you said was that the key word is awareness, being aware of anything. And I was aware today of my of everything. So thank you for that, this word. Uh, another thing is you were you mentioned three kinds of experience, I think. And if you could repeat that so I can write it down. Okay. And the third thing is, I thought, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I think I, I think I know it, but like, what's the difference between thoughts and uh, insights? How do we, do you understand? All this, it's all these words, many, many words going through your, my mind when I'm meditating, many, many, many words. When is it a thought? When is, it, when is it an awareness? When is it an insight? Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, both of them are huge questions. I mean, I have whole courses on each of those questions <laughs> that you raised. <laughs> um, the first one on the three characteristics or in the Mahayana world called the three seals, a seal like you seal a letter, like a stamp, a seal with wax. and um, they are uh, indeed insights um, into the nature of reality or the nature of our meeting with reality, uh, which is um, liberating insights. The reason we do this is to have insights that help us to be, to be free. It's not a theoretical um, project we're doing here. It's a real practical project to discover our innate our basic freedom and the three insights are uh, dissatisfaction dukkha um, that experiences have a kind of form or shape and usually um, they are unsatisfying they they not it's not enough um, and sometimes the dukkha is stronger, like a pain or a duality or friction or anger or conflict or whatever with ourselves or the world. The second is um, that the experiences really, really flow and pass. We cannot fix them. You yourself said endless thought, endless words, endless words that pass by. The fact that there's word after word after word after word and thought after thought after thought and sensation in the, in, the, in the finger is constantly not, never the same finger one moment to the next. That's an insight, meaning nothing is stuck and fixed in concrete and 
we would just be drowned in misery. Um, and so everything's flowing and passing is the nature of things. And third, that uh, we don't have to take it all personally. <laughs> Non-self, if you like, mm. sanata is non, uh, it, it goes to very, you know, extended places like emptiness, which is very much a Buddhist concept. I don't like that concept. I don't think we need it. Um, but it's much more a sense of things are happening and we're not necessarily in charge, in control, or owning them. Um, so, um, uh, they're the three. And the second question is very relevant. And I would say the insight is more the aha it's more the aha it's not just another voice it's a voice that we realize something that you didn't realize before so before they say this was clearly seen as just a hand all of a sudden i realized wow it's not just a hand it's a buzzing energy field it's it's full of life you know like this Oh, okay. So now I understand something new I didn't understand before. So that's the kind of insights we're talking about. It, it's something that stays with us. It's not just another message as if we're reading an encyclopedia. It's a sort of another way of looking at reality that stays with us. Um, and so that's different from all the different thoughts that come in the mind. Um, a thought may say that as well. It might be a thought in the mind that says, ah, yes, things coming and going, fine. But it, that, that thought is based on a kind of something a little bit deeper called, well, I look at things differently now. I've got an insight into if everything is changing, then why do I need to get stuck in this problem I have right now? with my family member <laughs> why does it feel so stuck but wait a minute let me look again at this argument i'm having with somebody does it is it really fixed as much so it, it, it works in life and frees us up in life um and so even though it might come as thought as well it's based on something more like a shift in the way we look at uh, reality the right view is the first of the eightfold path and it's there thank you okay uh, yeah We're, we have a lifetime to work on this uh, <laughs> this explanation no, we don't need a lifetime we need to do it right now you know okay. just when you get up from the chair it's also happening <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, so, um, actually, yes, I think that a good homework for today is, is actually um, some things that came up in the meditation and after, just a, a sense of uh, how much support I need in my spiritual life. Uh, I think it's a good thing to reflect on. If there's silence, for example, in the meditation, I don't get the guidance. Uh, okay, what am, can I let go of that and and gradually see that let's put it like this we think that we need to do something in order to go to a special state of mind called meditation but can we feel that there's something there that takes us that we don't need a voice telling us the voice of, in this case, Stephen, is a, a useful reminder, but it's like the map or the compass on a journey. Can we feel that, let the journey take us, which is doing anyway? So there's something there which is quite fundamental. The meditation, in a sense, is happening to us. And... Uh, 
just sort of contemplate that in any way, maybe write it in your journal if you are doing that. Is it something I really need to do? In the end, isn't it something about being? That's, I just let it maybe take me. So it's a reflection, I think that's well worth it. Okay, thank you everybody and we'll see you tomorrow. And I uh, hope you enjoy the weekend and uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning, hopefully. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay.